hey guys, I want to make a quick and dirty video real quick. It's going to be fast. I'll make a more complete one later. I'm going to talk fast. So if I'm talking too fast, just slow me down on YouTube. Um, so I'm going to talk about acoustic foam. So I see a lot of people talking about acoustic foam and they have all these reviews and stuff. They're not acousticians. They don't know what they're talking about. No one on YouTube really, other than a handful of people know what they're talking about. And they're trying to have like a one size fits all, you know, type of thing. And, and it doesn't work like that. The shape of your room it is so important. Your reflection points, things like that for mixing rooms, those are all much more important than your, your acoustic treatment or diffusion. Uh, so really get those dialed in, understand those. If you're trying to do DIY stuff, you can really get a lot out of it by researching some of these things, but learn those first. You, you can't just put a panel up because you saw it on a picture and then hope that it's, it's good. There's a reason why these people are putting panels up in specific places. So I'm not going to get into all that aspect of it. What I want to do want to get into is why acoustic foam is bad if it's cheap and the difference between them. So a good acoustic foam absorbs evenly across mids all the way to highs. Um, if you have it thick enough, it can actually even go to, to a little bit lower in the, in the lower bass ranges. Um, but not, it will never ever go completely into the sub bass range. Uh, so knowing that, the point of acoustic foam is to reduce echo and reverberation. It's not to soundproof your room. You're not going to stop. You're not going to stop sound at all. I mean, it just it just stops reverberation and makes it you know decay time. So, what you want to do is you want to evenly absorb all those things. Cheap acoustic foam is just going to absorb the high end. It ends up messing up your entire room worse than if you had nothing there before. So, if I grab this cheap piece of foam, this is stuff you get off Amazon, guys. So if I'm talking like this and I put it in front of my face and I take my, my, my foam away and then I put it in front of my face again, you can hear, barely hear, the high end being absorbed. Now, the problem with that is the high end is where your clarity of your voice, your vocals, that's what you're taking away. Now, you usually take that away when you've got good acoustic foam, but now with cheap acoustic foam, you're only taking that away. It's, it, it, you, you're completely screwing yourself. So you see a lot of people who've got all these you know, panels that they've got and they've ordered it and they put it all over the room. Yeah, the echo's gone, but the, the quality and the clarity is just missing and it sounds terrible, honestly. Um, so let's grab this. So this is real acoustic foam. Now, if you notice the difference between this, very light, you know, very light, very non-sparkly. This, very dense. But the main thing is when I talk into it, actually using the foam. So when I put the foam in front of my face, you can hear an audible difference. It actually gets, you know, you can hear the, the, the frequencies actually be absorbed. And as long as the, the reputable company is that you're buying from is, is something like, you know, either old or people have had great reviews about it for recording, then you should be fine. You should be okay to buy that foam. But if they're just saying that it stopped the echo, I mean, anything could stop the echo. It doesn't mean that it's good for recording. And for vocals at all, you should never use cheap foam. Um, besides the cheap foam being a carcinogen a lot of the time for, for the blowing agents. So the main thing you want to do is, is toxicity is an issue. And same thing for Owens Corning or mineral wool when you're building those panels. The glass gets into your lungs a lot of the time when you're building those things. If you don't cover them correctly, it'll get through... Um, through that that uh, covering and it makes your life hell. I mean, it, it really does a lot of damage in there. So there's, it's important to make sure that you're building these things correctly. And if you aren't an acoustician, please stop giving acoustic advice. You are hurting people. Every single day I have to deal with this. Every day I hear people talk about how, you know, they can get acoustic foam on Amazon for this, this, and this. So you're not only are you are hurting businesses, which I could honestly care less about, it's more that you're hurting people. So you're, you're making them buy your crap, you know, foam because you're giving a review on it and it's not good foam. I know you think that it is because it took away the reverb, but until you've been into a room that is truly treated correctly, do not give your opinion on what you think works and what you think does not work. Um, it, it's just not, it's not helping. So I don't, I don't want to rant too long um, about this. I just want to kind of go over the differences between them and kind of show you. So the other thing is, if you look at these foams right here, right? So the like I said before, the sparkle, you can see a sparkle here, right? So you think that this is, you know, good acoustic foam, right? So it, it sounds kind of cheesy, but the sparkle here is a lot different than here. That's the very obvious way to kind of tell if it's good acoustic foam as well. Besides it being dense, you talking through it, 
and, and actually making an audible difference and it being sparkly, that's the easiest and best way to kind of figure out if the acoustic foam is real acoustic foam and if it's actually going to help you in your studio. If you don't have enough money for acoustic acoustics yet, then just either A, save up or B, try to find some used panels online using um, Craigslist or something, Facebook Marketplace, and try to uh, and just try to test it before you get it. You know, a lot of people will say it's Oralex. Don't just trust them. Don't just talk into it and see if it makes an audible difference. So uh, I hope that kind of helps. Um, there's only a handful of companies out there that even have good quality acoustic foam, uh, and really trying to to hone in on that. Besides Oralex, you know, Oralex is good, but it's not the best. Um, I don't want to name drop any brands out there. Uh, I don't want to name drop my brand. I just want you guys to know the difference between it and to really audibly tell. These these panels, you can tell the difference between them. I mean, look at that panel. This panel is obviously, obviously different than these panels. Now, if you don't know that by looking at it, I mean, because you don't have one side by side, then that's not your fault. But if you've seen this video, now it is your fault. So really do your research and really, really try to look up uh, videos on Google and stuff like that instead.